How to Shoot a Baseball or Softball Game. With me, Pete Gottschalk. to the channel everyone my name is Pete and today as I mentioned we are going to go through how to shoot a baseball or softball game going from pre-game all the way to the end of the game whether you're doing video or photo I think these rules generally apply so for this video I'm gonna be explaining how to shoot a game basically if you're shooting for one team now my job is a little different with MLB I shoot for both at one time so there's little things that kind of differ when it comes to that process, but most of you, I'm assuming, are shooting for one team, whether it be your high school team, college softball team, college baseball team, or minor league team, whatever it be, I'm assuming you're shooting for one team. The thing with baseball and softball, pregame starts very early, most notably in baseball, it starts very early, almost three and a half to four hours before the game even starts. The players are out taking, uh, they're, they're doing their early work, they're taking ground balls with a coach, doing like hands drills, and then BP starts. And in BP, the home team always starts first. And an important thing to know about BP in batting practice is that the most players will hit in groups, so the best players tend to hit together, whether that be for the Atlanta Braves, Acuna and Ozzy and Marcelo Zuna all hit together, or Georgia and our best four hitters hit, best four or five hitters usually always hit together then too. So you're gonna wanna plan who you wanna shoot and who you wanna get shots with around those groups as they start coming in and as they rotate in and out of the cage. During pregame, you're gonna spend most of your time right behind the little cage, right behind the shell, as it's called. Um, that's where players take a batting practice. And then you're also gonna to wanna to roam around if you have the access to get players taking ground balls, fungo work, anything like that, running out into the outfield. Um, for that reason, you're gonna be kinda of right in the middle of all the players. And you're gonna to wanna to keep your head on a swivel. This is important. You wanna stay out of people's ways, make it seem like you're not there. I mean, blending in, kinda of fly on the wall situation. So that's the one thing you always wanna keep your head on a swivel. During this time, the priority should be detail shots. Whether that be gear, close-ups, players coming out of the dugout, putting their helmet and their gloves on to get ready for batting practice, pitching machines, tossing fly balls, close-ups of coaches hitting fungos, anything tight because you're not gonna get this type of access during the game. So you want to really hone in on scene setters and, and tight shots in general so you can kind of start the story of the game um, with some super cinematic stuff in the beginning. When you're shooting BP into a cage, you're gonna wanna take note of the net. The net is something that you can use to your advantage and it's also something that gets in the way. It's really easy to back focus on the net, meaning when you're shooting the player, the net will take the autofocus. So if you can use manual focus, uh, at Georgia what we used to do, we used to kind of go under the net and pick the net up and stick our cameras under. It's a little risky and you probably won't be able to do that if you're shooting like a big league game, but that's something. That's an idea of, of a way to get around that net. And, and sometimes in this Javi photo, Javi Baez photo from spring training last year, I used the net for composition. There's a million different ways that you can utilize the net. This is, pregame is also a good time to get grounds crew shots. The grounds crew shots are quintessential to, I believe, telling a story. At Georgia, we would always make this post-game recap if we won. And we almost always used a grounds crew shot, whether that be chalking the line, patting the mound down, getting it ready, spray paint in the field. Make sure you get some grounds crew shots just to be able to tell that story and start it off on a good note. So before I get into actual game coverage, there's two notes I have for y'all. One is do not follow the ball. Do not follow the ball. It's gonna move around too fast, it's too unpredictable, and you're not gonna be able to keep up. Only in certain situations do you want to follow the ball. Maybe there's a batter with two strikes and you wanna get a little tracking pitch into that strikeout, that's useful. Or, or maybe you want to do a tracking edit, kind of like that Beats by Dre thing that my coworker Matthew Fosnott kind of uh, made popular across the internet. But do not follow the ball. The second note I have for you guys is you gotta understand that you will miss things. You're not gonna get the shortstop making a diving play. You're not gonna get every single home run. You're not gonna get every single strikeout. There's only one of you and there's a million things that go on during a baseball or softball game. So you need to understand that you, can, you can't get every single shot. It's just not possible. So don't get discouraged if you miss one. Let's get into game action. Innings one through three. During this time, uh, most people, what I like to do is you set up in a photo well, whether that be first base or third base, it really depends on where your dugout is. These are always gonna be just beyond the dugout, field level. And, and just a tip, everything looks better field level 
So if you have that access, use it. If you have more of a right-handed dominated lineup, maybe you set up on the first base side so you can see their faces while they're hitting. And if you have a left-handed dominant lineup, maybe you set up on the opposite side, the third base side, so you can see their faces. That's really up to you. It's what I like to do. It's just generally better to see the, the uh, hitters' faces, I'd say, instead of their backs. And you won't want to move around much the first three innings, maybe once after the first two, but you're going to want to stay in one place pretty stationary because you do not want to miss those early game moments with the best hitters. Those, those first three, four, five hitters is when the best chance something happens, a home run, extra base hit, some runs being scored. You want to get those best hitters. That's when the stars are up. So you want to have a clean view of home plate, maybe the dugout, and then obviously all four bases so you can really capture those moments early on because that's going to be when the best chance of those things happening will be. And another tip, try and capture a shot of each pitcher in the first two innings. Depending on what team you're shooting for, this will vary. I always get my pitcher shots in the second inning because the best hitters come up in the first inning, so I don't want to miss those hitters, if that makes sense. But if you're only shooting for one team, you're going to want to shoot your pitcher in the first two innings, just to have it, just to kind of check that off your list early. Innings four through six. So in these innings, the game is kind of settling in. Pitchers are getting into a groove. Hopefully they are. If, you're, if your pitcher's getting smashed, then he's probably coming out. But as the game settles in, you're going to have more of a chance to want to, to be able to roam around. And you're going to want to do this through very up the shots. You don't want everything, everything shot from one location on the field. Shooting through fans, pandemic permitting, is a super interesting angle. Shooting wide, shooting from the concourse, shooting 10 rows deep are just some ideas. I shot 10 rows deep this year and it was cool. I liked it a lot, honestly. It gave, there are a lot of unique angles that you could go utilize, such as right behind the catcher, which is an angle we normally didn't get, and kind of a little elevated angle, which is nice for defense. It's easier to shoot. So since there's not that early game moments and there's not those late game stressful, high intensity moments, you're gonna have the most time in the middle of the game to play around with your settings, different types of shots. Maybe you do a couple pitch trackers or something like that. You wanna mess around during this time. If you wanna get some defense, you're gonna wanna shoot the shortstop, this is your time to do that and focus on getting base runners stealing bases. And that brings me into my point. Situational shooting is very important in shooting baseball or softball. It's critical. It helps to know the game. Do not be formulaic when shooting. You don't have to shoot the same thing every time. You don't have to shoot the batter every time. You don't have to shoot just the pitcher every time. You're going to want to vary up your looks like I said. Shoot and adapt based upon the game and the game flow. A good example is when Ronald Acuna gets on first base, whether that be a walk or a single, I'm always looking for him to steal. So if we have two shooters there, one of us focuses on the batter, and then maybe I'll shoot Ronald Acuna trying to steal a base, because more often than not, that happens. And it's it's a different shot, it's a cool shot that you can utilize, put it in slow motion, it looks sick. You need to be aware of certain situations in baseball. Another situation would be, maybe there's a force out at second, so there's a runner on first, and there's a runner on second, or, or whatever it be, there's a double play that's possible. Focus on the shortstop. If I'm focusing on Dansby Swanson, I, if there's a ground ball hit to him and I get that shot of him gathering, flipping it to Albies at second base and throwing it over to Freeman, that's a sweet shot. You're going to want to think about those things. Like I said, you're not going to be able to get everything. If a home run is hit while you're cued in on a shortstop or the second baseman, so be it. It just happens like that sometimes. You got to risk it for the biscuit. <laughs> If there's a high pressure situation, such as bases loaded or something like that, a, a big hitter up, an Aaron Judge or a Bryce Harper, and you have a pitcher on the mound that really that really gives you good reactions and he plays a lot of motion, such as maybe Trevor Bauer, focus on the pitcher. You know, if he strikes him out, he's going to scream or he's going to yell or he's going to pump his fist. That's critical to telling the story of a game and those types of shots go a long way in your own portfolio too. So situational shooting in baseball, always be aware of runners on base, balls and strikes, who's up. You have to be aware of everything. Innings seven through nine. Innings seven through nine, the end of the game, it's very important for many reasons. There's gonna be pinch hitters, there's gonna be a lot of high intensity, high pressure scenarios with runners on scoring position. There's gonna be some pitching changes as well. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of settle into a spot, most, most likely in a photo well on the field level if you have the access, of course, because you're not gonna to wanna to move around with these high pressure scenarios. The priority is to be getting that content. Like I said, this is your opportunity to kind of close up the story. If there's a new pitcher coming in from the bullpen, get a shot of him running in from the bullpen. It's kind of a way to tell the story of we're moving from one pitcher to the next. It's a new chapter in the game, quote unquote. Maybe there's a, a pinch hitter that comes in, get a slow motion of that pinch hitter coming in, um, coming up to bat. 
because then you can attach that to a broadcast call saying Adam Duvall is coming up to bat. He's hitting for Johan Camargo, whoever it is. That's a good way to be able to tell the story and you're gonna to wanna to be aware of these things and really pay attention so you can capture these moments. The most crucial thing in these late innings is to have a clean view of home plate and a clean view of the pitcher's mound because ultimately those are the most pro high priority um, places on the field to shoot and in those late innings you're going to want to want a final reaction or a final play at the plate or, or a final run scored whatever it is you're going to want to get a clean shot of those things so make sure you have a clean view of home plate and a clean view of the pitcher's mound. If there is a runner in scoring position and it's a potential walk-off scenario, be aware of that. Think of the things in your head of what you're going to do if certain things happen. So if there's a runner on second base and there's a batter up and he hits a single to center field, are you going to follow the batter for his reaction or are you going to go to home plate for the final play at the plate? Maybe a cool slide, maybe a fist pump after he scores. It's really up to you, but you need to be thinking about these things. Be aware before things happen, especially in late game scenarios. Post game. Post game is really simple in baseball. It's, I mean, it's a high five line. When that happens, I can't speak to this because I shot 10 rows deep uh, off the field this year for MLB. Hopefully this year is a little different. It's pretty much just a little high five line and it's really easy to capture, pretty self-explanatory. Maybe you want some slow motion, key in on players that you think will give you good reactions. Using a Ronin in this situation would be helpful. I know we've done that a ton of MLB, especially during the postseason and for big games. And it does really well on social media. So that's a good idea if you do have access to a Ronin and a wide lens. Utilize that for those post-game handshakes. With that being said, thank you all for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, let me know below. And like and subscribe, of course. I work pretty hard on this channel. And we're seeing a lot of growth recently. And it's good to see. But we want more. We want more. So... Thank you all for watching again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.